somebody that's been on the planet now for a number of decades, or it really doesn't matter the timeline, somebody that's taken in and taken these chemicals on their body over a period of time, what do we do to detoxify and get back to a baseline? Obviously, we want to make the changes like we talked about to today to the best of our ability to prevent further accumulation. But what do we do to clean the body up and get back to a baseline? I love this question because a low-tox lifestyle or one where we seek to reduce our toxic burden isn't only about avoidance, but there's two pieces, right? Number one is avoidance, right? We want to avoid as many exposures as we can, but we can't avoid them all. So what do we do with the amount that we can't avoid? Well, we want to support our body's detoxification processes. We have built-in detoxification. Otherwise, we would be dead. However, with that said, those detox pathways are definitely getting burdened in a lot of people, overtaxed to the point where there's excess that the body cannot deal with. In those cases, increased risk of diseases like cancer, reproductive issues like uh, infertility, PCOS, endometriosis, with all of these extra exposures that we, our body can't handle, we need to increase our capacity to detoxify. So what does that mean? We have built-in detoxification like glutathione. Glutathione is known as the master antioxidant, but that name literally does not do it justice. That one single molecule that our body makes, our livers and kidneys make glutathione. These glutathione molecules detoxify heavy metals. They detoxify free radicals, chemicals that we're exposed to, things like cigarette smoke, uh, alcohol consumption, and acetaminophen use can actually deplete our glutathione. So in a healthy lifestyle, we want to remove those factors so that we're not stealing glutathione away from ourselves and also increasing our ability to make more glutathione through diet and lifestyle. So what I'm hearing you say there, you want to minimize exposures like we've been talking about. So we're not wasting glutathione. And then there's diet and lifestyle things we can do to ramp it up, which I'll have you get into now. Yes. I'm so happy to talk about this because most people think hear glutathione and they think, ah, I should supplement. That shouldn't be the first thing that you do because some people can make, most people make enough glutathione. It's just that our lifestyle robs ourselves of the glutathione that we have, but you can increase the amount that you make through your diet and lifestyle. So avoiding the cigarettes, minimizing alcohol consumption and acetaminophen use, and then also increasing your consumption of sulfur containing foods. Glutathione is made out of three amino acids, glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. Cysteine contains sulfur. If you have enough sulfur in your body, you can make glutathione. So what foods are rich in sulfur? Meat, eggs, dairy products, sulfur-rich vegetables like cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, broccoli sprouts have a high amount of sulforaphane. This is a very rich source of sulfur. Garlic, onions. You can increase your glutathione with matcha green tea, with berries. Lots of different ways to increase glutathione through the diet. So remember, if you remove the sources of toxic exposure from your lifestyle as much as possible, so the avoidance piece, then you increase your consumption of sulfur-rich foods, you can increase your glutathione production. Simply be just the balance because our bodies can also recycle glutathione. So I don't want people to think that, oh, I just got to get more. I got to get more. Well, you already have some and you have ways to recycle glutathione too. So as long as you're not adding more toxins to your body, then that recycling system is functioning optimally. That's what we want. We don't always need to add more. And I think that's the trap that a lot of people fall into is let me just grab that glutathione supplement and I'm good to go. Well, you're not addressing the root cause. The root cause is your lifestyle and your diet. Okay. But say somebody is going to take on a lot of what we said today and they want to speed the process up of cleaning their body, would you say glutathione as a supplement could be good in the short term as they're making the switches, as they're cleaning up their body? 
I'm just curious what role you think supplementation plays, even if it's just temporarily. Yeah, temporary is better than long-term. It's not necessarily meant to be a long-term fix because again, if you are someone who is, maybe you have a genetic predisposition to having low glutathione. Well, that's something you need to do a test for, have your doctor test for that, test your glutathione levels, work with someone if you need to, but I highly recommend it's very individualized with supplementation. You've got to work with someone who can actually measure your levels. So let's say you want to, there's some studies showing that when you supplement with glutathione, it can help with your athletic performance, right? If you're using it maybe in a certain way, it just depends on how you're using it. If you're someone who's just like, oh, well, I've got a high toxic load. Let me just throw a bunch of glutathione at it. That might not actually be the answer for you. So you've got to work with your healthcare provider to discover what the needs are and how to actually go about it. Because this is not meant to be a detox protocol, quick fix type of thing. Again, the toxic burden is built up over time because of our diet and lifestyle. So once you sort of, like you said, okay, maybe I'm not feeling so great. Maybe I want to try to do some supplementation. There is a time and place for that as well, but it's highly individualized. So I don't think it's necessarily a wise uh, piece of advice to give people to tell them to run out and get a, a supplement. I think you should really work with your healthcare provider to determine your unique individual needs. Okay. If somebody decides a supplement of glutathione is right for them, maybe even temporarily, what type do you recommend? Liposomal glutathione. That is glutathione in whole form, but it's encapsulated in a liposome or a type of fat so that it can increase the absorption because our bodies cannot absorb whole glutathione. Our cells need special transporters to actually bring glutathione into the cell where it can be active. And that is very, I would say, um, it's ineffective, it's inefficient. So supplementing with whole glutathione outside of liposomal form doesn't work. Other ways can be N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor to glutathione. But given that some people have a genetic predisposition to having lower enzymatic activity to make glutathione, reduce capacity to make glutathione, then providing the NAC precursor won't really help either. So that's why it's individualized. Because if you don't have the genetic predisposition to having reduced glutathione capacity, then the NAC would work. Maybe. But if you, it, it's kind of a toss-up. That's why it's so highly individualized. Because the genetic polymorphism can be up to 25% of the population. All right. So diet supplements aside, if somebody wants to help support their body in making glutathione, can they do certain types of exercise or other lifestyle things in that realm? Yes, absolutely. So stress management is key. That's one that's going to affect your overall health, but it also has effects rooted with glutathione as well. Aerobic and strength training. So aerobic and weight bearing exercise have been shown to increase glutathione production in people as well as uh, adequate sleep. And again, avoiding the, uh, the really toxic stuff like the cigarettes, that's going to do you a world of good, as well as uh, excess alcohol consumption. So the things that we know to deplete glutathione, those are the ones that we want to avoid. And then we want to add in these sulfur-rich foods to support glutathione balance, as well as increase our, our body's capacity to make more, which is the exercise component of it, we really need to keep the body moving in order to get that optimal level of glutathione. How do you feel about saunas and other lifestyle modalities to help with detox? Sauna, specifically infrared sauna has been studied. I don't know for a fact that the uh, finish or steam sauna, I don't know if it would have the same effect, but basically if you sweat and do sweating, then you're increasing your capacity to detoxify environmental chemicals. There was a series of studies conducted by one group that showed increased amount of excretion through the sweat of heavy metals, persistent organic pollutants like PCBs, as well as organophosphate pesticides, plasticizer chemicals, BPA, phthalates. So a lot of these chemicals that we've been speaking about today can be excreted through sweat. 
So even just if you don't have a sauna, just get moving, get sweating as much as you can. I think that's the key takeaway here. And for somebody who's coming into this feeling like they've lived a pretty conventional life, probably built up a lot of toxins over the years, is there a certain test you recommend to get kind of a picture in the beginning where we're at with toxins in the body and then something we could do periodically to make sure we're expelling them? Yeah, there are actually a number of tests out there. So if you work with, let's say, a functional or integrative practitioner, they have a number of tests that they can run. There's also a consumer-based test called the Million Marker that you can do for yourself just to get a snapshot, like you said, just let me have a look at, at my exposures. And there might be something in there that surprises you. And you might be you know, having a higher level of phthalates than you thought. Oh, well, I've, I've removed phthalates, but I still have them. So then that gives you a clue on where else to look in your daily routine, in your home, in your lifestyle that could be contributing this extra source that you didn't think about. So there are some useful consumer tests, I believe, like the million marker that could be interesting. But again, I wouldn't want to misinterpret these in results because once you get the results, you're probably going to want to work with someone to pinpoint the source so that you can actually get rid of it. And since for a lot of people, toxins have been building up in the body over a long period of time, do you recommend if somebody realizes that they're toxic and they're going to start to support glutathione, maybe get in the sauna, start to really detox their body, should they do that slowly as to not overwhelm the body as they're cleaning things out? Yes, I think you should take it slowly. And what I did personally was start with the avoidance piece. So avoiding further toxic exposure by swapping out my products. Then I was taking a step back and seeing where I'm at. How do I feel? Do I still have some issues there? What could I do to further optimize my situation? And then if you get into a sauna, let's say you go too hard too fast, you can actually get a detox reaction. So once the liver and kidney maybe do a purge of toxins at once, that will overwhelm the system and you can get headache, migraines, you can get some skin rashes. It's not, it's not a good situation to be in, but at the same time, you can support your body through that period with increasing your water consumption. So make sure your water is filtered properly so it can remove contaminants. You're not adding more back in. Drink a lot of water, get a good amount of rest, try to get as much whole foods in your body at that time to provide the nutrients for your body to make the glutathione. There are even products out there such as charcoal binders that can help as well. But again, talk to your doctor because these might not be for everyone. I was actually going to bring up charcoal. I'm wondering if there's other products as we're detoxing that can support the body. Anything else that we haven't mentioned in that realm? Not that I can think of. I think we've covered it pretty well. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. We don't always need to add more. And I think that's the trap that a lot of people fall into. Let me just grab that glutathione supplement and I'm good to go. Well, you're not addressing the root cause. The root cause is your lifestyle. It's really about taking a holistic...